the execution of the program for the uh, for any procedure which is called in the program in the program in the sense which is called from the program so in the previous class we have seen all about the activation record and if you rem and if you remember in the activation record was resembling for the <coughs> it was resembling for procedures and how if many procedures are there how those many procedures are going to be in the fashion of the lifo first uh, first in um, first in last out so in the fashion of the first in, uh, first in last out as they were stored in the stack so they used to make according to the sequence of the program uh, how the sub procedures were called in the program and uh, those activation record used to help for running of the uh, for running of the program so that we can save the memory during the running of the program how dynamically the memory used to be saved so we have seen all such things and uh, in the activation record we have also seen how uh, automatically and sorry in uh, using other procedure is the heap procedure how the dynamic activation uh, sorry how the dynamic memory allocation used to be done using the uh, building uh, applications like malloc and calloc whenever wherever any place in the program so we, we used a I mean, this program the programmer used to assign uh, the memory or deallocate the memory for so called procedure for so called procedure whatever uh, for so called procedure and in that too for so called procedure in that uh, for the particular variable for the particular variable what has to be live during the execution of the program so that was all about and i have taken previous last two uh, weeks for uh, conducting only the active record as uh, suggested by your classmates for not understanding so now today we, we shall study the compilers very important that is compilation of expressions this compilation of expression is also very important for how a code used to be generated how a code used to be generated and how the code get generated by the compiler and compiler has to ensure itself that what is the type of the variable and what is the length of the variable also so we shall see how the to talk on more on compilation of expressions what kind of expressions we need to have in the compilers Uh, as you all know, the compiler understands the high-level language, so the compiler takes uh, all the uh, uh, all the instructions in the high-level language. Uh, like, uh, if even if you want to add, so it uses like uh, uses the uh, operator like plus, and if you want any subtraction, uses the operator like minus. so these all the keys which are present in the qwerty multi keyboard so those all the keys which are present at the keyboard of your desktop or at your laptop so do not keys are having the ascii code they themselves are recognized by ascii code and how these codes are recognized by any language of by any language in the sense by any whatever the language which you are opting and every language has got its own the compiler so that compiler how does it understands the uh, keys is are you understanding are you understanding Under is there? Is Ahlia Sunna? 
tout de suite. Renali. Pallavi. Arno. Priya. Jitendra. Vivita Kajal Vibal. Ashwarya Dipti. Sanskriti. Shall I continue? Are you there? Onkar is there? Ji, madam. Ji. Ha, ha. Thank you. So today we are studying about the compilation of expressions. So I just recalled in from the previous class what we have studied AR and we have studied in AR in the stack form formation ar resembles the stack and uh, which resembles the procedure and uh, we are also seeing the how the uh, heap also uses the uh, uses the dynamic memory allocation in this instance it says how we can use the dynamic memory allocation program while executing so that the memory can be minimally utilized by the compiler now today we are going to study about <coughs> the compilation of expressions this compilation of expression why such an issue uh, issue in the sense uh, here how the expressions how the every compiler every compiler will execute any expressions because of our studying the variables we need to know because why variables are used to be know that variables are used to evaluate any kind of uh, expressions or either it can be the logical expression or it can be the arithmetic expressions so these variables are used for those things so we have seen how the variables are legally uh, legally having the data type and we have also seen how the label uh, variables will have uh, and not only the legally data type they can be performed what kind of operations are implied on the variables and we know that why the variables are are uh, required to use variables are required to use do some task so to doing some task sorry do some task that we make use of the variables and those variables variables objects or it can be any other identifier so these uh, of variables objects or any kind of I must say in, uh, overall in one uh, one word identifiers so these identifiers how they can be used they can be used in terms of uh, in terms of expressions so these uh, in terms of expressions so why uh, applying in terms of expressions there can be the type of the instructions implied on those expressions the type of the instructions can be implied on those expressions can be plus can be minus can be any sort of the arithmetic operations also the expressions can be in terms of in terms of the logical expressions also overall the compilation overall the compilation of expressions can be uh, either arithmetically or can be either the logically uh, in the in a logic evaluated to do some task or to do some target of the program so what a programmer wants or what a programmer wish to have what kind of uh, what kind of goal or what kind of exp uh, what kind of task you need to execute so so at an outset we have only seen how a compiler takes for a variable uh, for a variable the data type and legally, legally the data types and how the variable will be um, uh, having its own memory utilization either these statically or either dynamically so it is better to have uh, we have seen uh, we is better to have uh, better to have dynamic during the execution of the program we have seen that also and what the advantage also we have seen so now the compilation of 
expressions. As I said, expressions can be the arithmetic expressions also can be or it can also be little expressions. So during the four generation for expressions, the compiler has to ensure itself that correctness of the code should be generated during the execution. And this is very efficient. Why, why this should be very efficient? Because it's the compiler. Because it's a compiler. Compiler understands all the high-level language. And, to, and here, to ensure itself the correctness of the code generated, it determines or it comes with some uh, issues that uh, makes the order of the expressions. Like till today, we know how should be the order of the expressions. Uh, should be either in the sense of order. For any expression to evaluate by the compiler, it should be the precedence, uh, precedence of operators. So the precedence of operators till today so far, we know that uh, the precedence of operator follows the uh, follows the priority based uh, to evaluate the expressions because in an expression, what kind of expression it will be, the kind of expressions it will be either uh, we have to follow from the left to right or anyhow the compiler follows from left to right only and it also, and it also follows the precedence of operators we know till today so far the precedence of operators that is uh, plus minus division and multiplication and also some uh, other uh, uh, some other operators which have their own priority based so plus, uh, plus and minus have got the first preference whenever a uh, compiler sees uh, among the operands Around the friends to evaluate the plus, so it sees uh, it gives the first preference. So, till uh, so far, till we know that it has to follow the operator precedence. So, to ensure this, uh, it has the major issues in generating the code for an expression. We have seen the code for how does it generate the code uh, for an uh, in generated expression. Uh, in assemblers, in assemblers, the assembler was part where after um, in broad way we have seen, but deeply now we have to come uh, because now we have to see deeply how a compiler generates the code of expressions for the uh, I mean for the expression uh, so that it can ensure itself that this is the correct code. Compiler ensures so that it is the correct code. So there are the major issues in code uh, for expressions, such as it has to determine while <clears throat> making a uh, uh, determination of the order in which the in which the operator used in an expression uh, should be evaluated uh, in an expression should be evaluated. So that means the determination of um, evaluation of the order for the operators in an expressions. So that uh, determination of an order, like uh, precedence of uh, operators, here it is followed. So what kind of precedence of operators here it is followed? Either it can follow the bottom up, also it can follow the um, top down parser also. So here, uh, and you know very well that in in your role, uh, low classes, what you have studied in your object oriented. Mm, in that, you might have seen uh, how the bottom parser does, how the top parser does, and maybe you have also seen how the evaluation of the expressions will be done using the precedence of operator. But here, compiler will follow a particular rule that is precedence of order, and in this precedence of order, it mm, prefers to follow from left to right uh, let uh, let me describe more in detail after uh, claiming the issues of claiming issues and now here why i have said the issues uh, like a plus b is what it, it has man is what and it must be i have an expression called as a plus b it has to compiler has to determine what is a and b and we are working with operand and what those are. Those are the data type of which type. 
it has the line of which type also and what is their length also what is their length also so based on the data type it determines what is the length of those operand which are used in between the operands so and there is also an um, uh, there is also an order to follow or to ex uh, evaluate to evaluate such an expression if only a plus b if there are people, uh, if there are something like a plus b is r plus b is c um, plus b so what should be the uh, what should be the evaluation scheme and how should be the uh, uh, how should be order to for, uh, to evaluate such an b expression so that is a very uh, major task for the compiler so for that reason it has to determine any particular order determination of an evaluation order for operators in expression determination of an evaluation of order for an operators in an expression so here the answer is that it follows the precedence of operator operator and the very next major issue is that a selection of instruction to be used in the target program selection of instruction in the sense like uh, i said just now one example a plus b a plus b is an expression and plus is nothing but here an instruction plus is nothing but here an instruction so uh, that plus indicate what kind of instruction for performing an operator sorry for performing an operation so that it can generate a code so that it can generate a code and during this time during uh, during uh, the selection time also it in also it multiples the instruction also it multiples the instruction to seek that target program or to seek that evaluation to seek that evaluation uh, selection of instruction in the sense here uh, or uh, something like it has to make a choice of the instructions that it can seek a plus b it can seek a plus b so for that reason it also uh, increases it also increases the choice of uh, choice of its uh, choice of its instruction by making a use of the registers. It uses use of CPU registers and uh, it also uh, handles the results of the partial results in an to generate the code. So how is the use of uh, CPU registers and how it handles the results of partial results now here one question is that what can be the partial results what can be the partial results the results which are lying just uh, the results which are lying between from register to memory and from memory to registers and from memory to registers so that in between the result which are still at the registers the results with the result which are just calculated at the or the results which are just evaluated at the registers, those results are nothing but CPU as the partial results. So here making use of registers in the sense, I, I mean making use of the registers in the sense, like we know that or we have just followed some uh, 086 registers in that you may be knowing that AX, BX, CX registers and how the, during the compilation, during the compilation because Compiler understands the high level language and it generates the assembly language. It generates the assembly language, which is nothing but the low level language, which is nothing but a machine understandable language. So, that machine understandable language, which is understood in terms of, or which we call it as the object code, object module, also we call it as machine language, also we call it as assembly language. So this assembly language program further it goes for uh, further it goes for pass one and pass two and later it generates the your uh, target program later it generates your target program. So till and uh, till it generates the assembly language program during that period during that period what not it does what not it does to seek the to seek the 
uh, evaluation of the expressions. Uh, a plus B directly A plus B, A and B are nothing but operands, which these operands are recognized by the memory address and uh, uh, from the memory address, they have to be transferred to the uh, registers. So uh, they after transferring to the registers, and other operation has to be applied over on that. So here, the what kind of code will be generated during the evaluation of the expressions? It is very important to make choice of the instructions so that to read your or to compute or to evaluate the A plus B. And the second, uh, sorry, uh, the third issue, which was nothing but, uh, which is nothing but to hold the result, the computed value to hold the result during till only at the time of the uh, register. So for that, we call it as the uh, actual results. And as I said here, determination of an evaluation, which is nothing but which is following the which is the operator precedence and uh, the operator uh, for, for any evaluation order for any evaluation order that is very consistent with the operator precedence because it should be very valued and uh, one uh, practical evaluation order is that it can follow the, um, it can for uh, it can follow the bottom up parser also or it can follow the top down parser where you know that bottom up parser it um, what it does uh, which uh, i mean in which the operators are reduced in which the operators are reduced during the bottom up parser and you may also be knowing that in the bottom up parser in the bottom up uh, parser the, where the operators are reduced to seek uh, to seek your expression uh, of the evaluation or to seek your evaluation of that expression so the ops are reduced there as we reach then in top down parser in which the operators are produced you may be knowing that in which the operators are produced during the top down parser and uh, all the uh, modern computers provides a uh, different ways of uh, performing such an operations uh, operations like as i said a plus b a plus b uh, a plus b means uh, here addition is performed here addition is performed so to do this addition operation to do this addition operation the compiler has to make a suitable choice here so that is what I am describing the second one very in detail. The compiler has to make a suitable choice uh, so that depending on the type and uh, length of the operand and also the addressability of the operands. Now here A plus B. A is one operand plus is, I must take one example here. So always uh, telling I'm A plus B. A plus B is an example. So here, for this example, for this example, how it is evaluated? It is evaluated based on the precedence of operator, or I must say as operator, operator precedence. Operator precedence is followed. A precedence of operator. Precedence of operator. Now, how many operands are there? Operand one and operand two. Two operands are there. Operand one, what it is having? Operand one is A, and operand two is something like B. And what is the data type? So, a compiler. Oh, a compiler it's a it's all based on the compiler a compiler has to make a very correct assurance it has to ensure that what is its data type now if i make what is its data type that it has to uh, for correctness of the uh, for correct code generation it has to make the uh, ensure itself so this all happens during the lexical analysis only 
and uh, till this stage it doesn't uh, ensures itself so but still the compiler uh, whenever it comes to every phases of the compiler uh, every phases as we have uh, five uh, five to six phases of the compiler so every phases of the compiler ensures itself that i am correct so here uh, that also does i mean um, the uh, it has to follow the uh, token wise uh, what is uh, a and what is plus what is b so it has to follow here very correctly so compiler ensures itself that it is if it is wrong it ra it ra raises an error it, it is wrong it raises an error so it is important that it has to ensure itself that what is the type and what is the length so type decides the length you may be knowing because if it is because if it is uh, if it is int because if it is int uh, it decides the length of two byte as per our uh, c language as per our c language i'm not talking here about something like cobol i'm just talking about our uh, high level language c or c++ so if it is int it decides itself the length as the length as the two and not only this it also has to decide the addressability now this addressability how it comes so this addressability it comes like say for example here how many uh, what what the kind of the assembly code will be now this is a high level language high level code or i must say high uh, it is a high level instruction instruction and what is the assembly language which it will produce uh, if you remember how it will produce in the sense it will take that a plus b first it moves what is that is what the second major issue uh, it tells something for the compiler or compiler makes like this move move the register move the register move the register something it uses the register a r e g something it uses the register a r e g whatever this addressability a is there it is been moved to say this register i must use the caps so i will use the caps here so that you can understand something like move the register move the register which register whatever the content whatever the content of this memory address the uh, operand a is stored at to whatever the location so it is moved into because unless and until we move uh, we move uh, the content of the uh, content of the variables to the register then only a, uh, then only it can perform the evaluations so here it has to move this a to some register to some register so a is being moved to this register next to what kind of operation it has to perform we know very well that it has to perform something like uh, something like addition so it uh, something like addition it has to perform so directly now it can perform the addition so that is what it is the second choice what is made here selection of instruction to be used in the target program or selection of instruction to reach that evaluation to reach that evaluation so here what it has to do it has to say the add it has to say the add add for what add for what you just add to this register you just add to this register what the addressability of b so that it is added a r e g to this you add the addressability or the content of b now where it is it is in still now this period it is called as partial it is called as during this period it is called as partial result why it is called as partial result why because still it is not at being loaded into the memory content still it is in register the result is in still register it has to go back to because here i have not given something like c is equal to i have not given something here like c equal to 
so this would uh, make uh, something like the complete expression but here it is still the partial result why it is partial result why because it has not been completely loaded back to the memory so still it is a partial result so that is what here the uh, i mean you, i think you have understood here now what color shows itself the color ensures itself first determination of range of for operators in expression what is the operators this is the operator in an expression in of to the head to the uh, addition then selection of the expression be that selection i have made the selection of the instruction and then i just add then i will use here complete word that is something like move so that uh, whatever may be the versions of the assembly language in that c so this is nothing but generation of i must say now this is nothing but generation of low level language generation of low level language and it is nothing but assembly assembly language and it is nothing but assembly language and it is also nothing but it is also nothing but this assembly language it is also nothing but machine language it is also nothing but machine language and further this goes and uh, generates the object module that is zeros uh, further it goes uh, for pass one and pass two and generates for object module or the target program or the target program now this is nothing but for this particular instruction for this particular instruction what is that particular instruction the particular instruction was a plus b so that particular instruction a plus b is turned like this in low level language by the compiler to do this now what this is still uh, at the partial state only further it has to generate what further it has to generate the code how does it generates the code means of uh, code generation how does it does that we have seen that we have seen in the sense during the period because now it is a state of assembly language what the assembler does it goes with the uh, multi pass or it go if it is a multi pass assembler it goes with multi pass for the generation of the object code if it is a two pass pass one and pass two it does the because we know what is each uh, instruction code it follows now each instruction code so to do this now it has to uh, follow the uh, follow uh, what it has to follow the operand descriptor and the register descriptors so to uh, go with the operand descriptor and the register descriptor for the code generation it follows the what what are the um, what are its content of the operand descriptor and what are its content of the uh, content of the Uh, register descriptor what are its content of based on that it generates the code so every typical computer uh, does in an uh, uh, results in an arithmetic or logically in the cpu now here arithmetically it is doing in the uh, register in the register unless it is uh, unless the result of the Um, expression is complete so it will uh, during till that period it will be called as the partial result only so because it is not yet uh, completed not yet completed in the sense it has to go back to the memory for addressability so till then only uh, till then it will be called as uh, the um, partial result only so if uh, the registers are not available here means uh, suppose i have a very big expression so if the registers are not available for holding the partial results then what it has to do at that time it can go with the temporary uh, i mean movement of the registers of the cpu to move back to the memory 
so that uh, can uh, at that time the compiler has to generate an appropriate instructions as here it is uh, that time what it will do again it may take back something like this move r sorry move r. instead of saying move r it may take move m it may say as move m move m move m in the sense moving the content of the register back to the memory back to the memory but i am not following here because my high level statement is not at given my high level statement is not at given that's what i am not following still here so however uh, further stages it follows uh, like that because because it has to move back so for good execution what it has to do and good and efficient execution the compiler should reduce the number of instructions also because this happens in code optimization this happens further there is a stage of the compiler or there is a phase of a compiler where compiler reduces the number of instructions so the number here i may go with one more what with one more to come back i may go with move m i may go with move m so move m is nothing but moving back the content of the register to memory the content of the register to memory so this shows something like very unnecessarily unnecessarily uh, a instructions are increased but i have to do according to this but this certainly there are some um, instructions but this is as per the code only but there are some uh, instructions where unnecessarily it increases like i would have done here one more uh, move r r e g into some other register instead of saying r e g i would have told b b r e g so that the content uh, of the uh, parent of b to register b so this would have done very unnecessarily and later i would have told add add b r e g add b r e g both the registers add and keep and the time being we keep the uh, result in the uh, register called as ERG. Time being, the partial result is kept in the ERG. So this is nothing but unnecessarily one step is increased here. One step means one instruction is increased here. That is, more BREG register is increased here. So to be very efficient, to be very efficient, that's what here the issue is told here. To be very efficient, its CPU should make use of a register in such a way that in such a way that it should handle the partial results in such a way that it has to be very efficient. It has to be very efficient. So it should reduce the number of instructions generated generated during the partial moves, during the partial moves or during the partial results between uh, memory to mm -hmm. CPU between memory to cpu i hope till here you all have understood yes understood so i will just remove this as per the compiler thinking that the compiler should be very efficient so i will just remove this and i will just add here the content of the operand b content of the operand b yes understanding Sonia, Onkar, Prashant, Abhilya, Ahilya, Akshada, Vivita, Rutuja. Still the code is not yet generated. Yes, Onkar, are you there? Am I audible? Am I audible on car? Saloni, Pranali, Vibita, Dipti, Aishwarya, Saurabh, Yogesh is there, Ritwij, Naveen, Yes, am I audible? Okay, fine. Uh, still, the uh, code is, uh, I mean, not yet generated. Only the till we are in assembly code. 
the assembly code and uh, this uh, i mean whatever the compilation of uh, whatever the compilation of uh, expression is there this is made under uh, this this concept is made to understand by using um, by developing a toy code uh, toy code generator for uh, expressions whatever we have used whatever i have used here so the toy code follows the yak compiler bottom up parser and uh, uh, for selecting such an instruction by the CPU uh, and to handle the partial uh, results very effectively, the compiler has to know the uh, state of the target machine or uh, target machine, and uh, yeah, that would be at every stage of the execution of the generated code, and uh, and the compiler has to perform for uh, performing an operation um, sh uh, should know whether each of the whether each of uh, whether each of the operand is a variable or it is a constant also while performing so if it is a variable uh, it would be it, if it is a variable uh, it would be more better for assigning the memory at a dynamic level and if it is a constant if it, it would be more better for assigning uh, the value in the pro program itself uh, so that whatever the Partial results are produced. Partial results are produced. They are um, they are uh, very appropriate, but very appropriate so that it can be used further to copy back them into the. Uh, so here uh, the compiler should also know once again all the whatever the values would be contained in the CPU registers also what the values so that it can. Uh, uh, compute at the uh, computer at that time where it has to uh, decide how it should put back the partial results to the memory or how it can copy the um, partial results from memory to reg registers. So here to understand that uh, the toy code generator uses the um, uh, it uses the notion um, notions something like the operand descriptor and also the register descriptor because here it is a moment between the uh, memory moment between a memory from register to memory so to generate the code what we have to understand here toy toy code generator uses the uh, user toy generator uses the operand descriptor and also the memory descriptor uh, to maintain the type, length, and addressability of the informations of each operand. How many operands are there here? Totally, we have two operands. That is operand 1 and operand 2. How many operands we have? Operands. Here, it would be more better if I take here in this way. Type, length, and addressability. And... Uh, Operands are very important. To know the operands. So it is very important that for a toy card, uh, for a toy code generator, for a toy uh, toy code generator, to understand all such things. First of all, uh, we need to know about the operands uh, how many operands are there and what, what is the type length and addressability uh, why because uh, for the efficient compiler why because for efficient execution of the compiler or for good execution good execution and also with the efficient compiler so to understand this the toy compiler make use of make use of operand descriptors operand descriptor 
and also it make use of not only operand register not only operand register descriptor so how is the operand descriptor and how is the register descriptor so uh, these both are the choices for the why we made such a descriptor why because there is a moment between the there is a moment between uh, the memory to register and from register to memory so these are the choices for having the instructions so that it can simply consider the operation to be performed on so called expression or to evaluate the so called expression so the code generator uses the now one thing you should understand the toy code or any code generator uses the uses what uses the uses the operand descriptor and register descriptor and how is the operand descriptor and how is the register descriptor i just uh, taken the snaps from your textbook of the dhamdre is understanding here onkar and uh, just let me show you ji madam okay so here operand descriptor because again loading i think i may lose the bandwidth of the internet so again i may lose the connectivity further so here from the notes itself i'll just uh, show you how is the operand descriptor operand descriptor has got the fields something like this attributes addressability why attribute attribute contains what length and type and uh, why what the attributes attributes of any operand contains the length and type and addressability here the addressability is specifies where the operand is to be located how how addressability in the sense the addressability can be of uh, the memory or it can be from register to memory or what addressability it is the addressability uh, if it is a memory means yum it indicates and if it is a register means it indicates r so that is what two fields are there that is how the description of the operand descriptor now here operand is what as per my example the operand is for a and b there are two operands in this example given example there are two operands and this example is of high level example and what is uh, this this is what it has been generated the assembly language and still here itself it doesn't over it doesn't finishes it has to generate the code to generate the code compiler has got its own format that is it make use of because there is a moment from memory to register and memory uh, register to memory so either of them either of them either of them in the sense the compiler has to use the and descriptor and it has to use the registered disc, uh, description when it is using the op now let me make sure on the operand descriptor the operand descriptor has got the two fields and what is that two fields that is it has the attributes and it has the two fields in the sense two field in the sense like uh, attributes and like it has got the addressability now at uh, now how i should define as per this example i must define something like this two fields so i will take here two fields number of uh, columns are two fields and as i have here uh, uh, i mean two operands so to represent the name of the column i'll just add one more so here the first is attribute attributes fields that is called as attributes field and the second field which is nothing but the addressability and the second field which is called as the addressability now here what are those two fields attribute describes what 
two fields again attribute now if you go with this example attributes describes what two field contains the sub fields that is type and length attribute is having type and length what is the type suppose if i have given the type something like int that would be the that would be the type and int has got two data type two byte data sorry int has got two byte data type and uh, the length of that i would describe here two byte but um, moving with the pascal uh, your book has given from the pascal so they have taken here as one byte now what is the addressability addressability is nothing but moving from memory why because the very first instruction it moves from memory addressability and the addressability for whom for i am describing for a i am describing for a and in the same way i must also describe for int addressability for b also so i am moving from b so this is how uh, the fields are described for operand description operand descriptor so how would be the after a operand descriptor how would be the uh, another one that is nothing but uh, the uh, register descriptor register descriptor also has got two states sorry two fields that is the i will just show here the status field and operand descriptor so here also it is used the same example who are a and b but here the expression used here as the multiplication expression and uh, the multiplication expression is used i'll explain the uh, skeleton of that code how it accepts because uh, it follows the um, parser which parser it may follow the top down parser or bottom up parser so how does it follows i'll tell you and that is how the code of the generator means skeleton of the code means the blueprint of the code generator how the blueprint of the code generator it uh, based on that only it describes the uh, it describes uh, uh, it uses uh, or it does the code generator uh, by using the operand descriptor and by using the register descriptor the register descriptor also has got the two fields that is the status and operand descriptor and the status contains again here something like uh, uh, the cont uh, i mean code hook whether it's a code free or occupied one if it is a occupied by uh, by if it uh, means if the register is occupied by some content so it will it will be telling us occupied and if it is not occupied means if it is released it will tell it is means if the register is released it will tell as uh, it will tell the code as free it will tell the code as free so here also we have two content so here as per this example if i would have used the star uh, in in that example star indicates as for multiplication operation so here if i would have used that example i would have written here there as mult mult the or multiply the uh, uh, multiply the register by the memory address that are uh, the content of the memory by b at that time also uh, the content of the re register descriptor would have been in this way how the content of the register would have been in this way why because uh, here the status is occupied the status is occupied because the uh, because the multiplied result is in register so that is what it is told here as the status as occupied and the operand descriptor what is the operand descriptor the operand descriptor has gone to the level of 3 has gone to the level of Three operand descriptor has gone to the level. What is this hash? 
hash is nothing but if the status is occupied this field contains the descriptor as hash this field contains the descriptor as hash this depends hash depends on the status as depends on status as the status is having the hash sorry as the status is occupied because here it is here what it is occupied if it is occupied it will be hash this is equal to occupied and will contains the script hash for the operand containing the rest for the operand containing the rest the generator a for every if you at the uh, start of its operation also and also stores all these descriptors in the array named as the register named as the register descriptor so here uh, how, how the skeleton or how is the toy code follows the skeleton for generating a code generator now what is the code is generated the code is generated till here to do this code generator what is the code generated see here the code is generated for this high level expression move r move r this is what the code this is what the code so three operand descriptors are used here three operand descriptors are used here to do the code generator as in the np and to be the integers and occupying one word of the memory here so that is what the descriptor of the given here Which I was also yeah, told this same ex uh, same example. What is the register? As I said, that is the list of registers. I would have copied this. Um, I would have told the same what is the content. So here, here is and here it is having the operand descriptor. Operand descriptor and the status here I would reduce here. First, it is the operand descriptor for the last state. So I must uh, have for uh, uh, the last uh, code whatever is there uh, the partial result for that partial result i need to describe so it is occupied the register is occupied and if the register is occupied it has to be denoted by the hash it has to be denoted by hash and why three because it is at the level of the three the code level is at the three which indicates the AREG contains the operand descriptor. AREG. Who is that AREG? AREG having the this B, the content of B, which indicates as what? The uh, I mean uh, the hash three indicates with uh, status as occupied, which indicates that the register AREG contains the operand which is described by the operator descriptor three. It is operator descriptor three. In this way. This is nothing but the description for the register. Register description. This register is uh, making use of the making uh, use for the code generator. Now, how is the code generator? Now, co code generator. I would like to show here the book of the textbook. Same as the notes have been uh, scattered. Code. It's uh, taking going long, long. So I would not prefer. Again, I may lose the connectivity. So I would, I would like to go with the same. 
so here the code generator as this uh, as the uh, code generator uses the uh, uses the both the descriptors that is the operand descriptor and the auto operand descriptor and the register descriptor this uh, whatever the yak uh, whatever we have here uh, whatever we have here the yak parser uh, code and this applies for every uh, compiler and uh, yak generator uh, you you know very well how is the yak generator um, the yak generator and specifications and uh, these are the rule the rule part and what is its action part to generate the code whenever it sees plus and whenever it sees uh, the star what it has to do star in the sense the multiplication the action which i have here as uh, for or the rule which i have here for the ex uh, expression and the terminals uh, how should be the terminals here the terminals can be your variables a and b and the expression can be uh, the same expression uh, there can be expression also and there can be multiple expressions with the ending with uh, concatenated by the um, more number of uh, terminals and uh, here uh, the f also indicates the non terminals uh, so it can the expression can be with the terminal and with the non terminals also so if the expression if the expression is having in this format this is the rule part and if the expression what the action should be performed on this expression the action to be performed on this expression which is nothing but the plus so uh, the environmental variables uh, for e and uh, the t which is indicated by the 1 and 3 uh, this is the action to be implemented on that on this rule uh, or what is the terminal the terminals can be also the, uh, the, the the terminals can also be the variables so uh, the same can be the variables that is 1 or 1 is equal to 3 or 3 is equal to 1 and uh, further the term is also uh, further the terminal is also described it can be with terminal or it can be with non terminal also uh, uh, further it can also be with a star also star indicates the further expression further expressions so here Uh, this uh, specification can, uh, can, I mean, contains a sequence of the translation rules uh, where each uh, rule contains uh, the every individual productions, um, and these productions are having the semantic actions. These are called as the semantic actions. These are called as the semantic actions, and uh, which should be performed during the uh, reduction time is uh, made. reduction why i am telling here because uh, when we use when we come to the expression evaluation so uh, when we come to the expression evaluation so the reduction means the production whatever the things that say to be at the productions and these are the grammar for this each production so we have here two productions that is the expression So here, star sorry, star B. As per my example, this A plus B. A plus B. If it is A plus B or if it is A star B, so that is a expression only. So that expression means what code should be generated. So it invokes the code generation. So that code generation again builds for. again what does it builds it builds for operand description it builds for mm -hmm. when it builds for operand description as i have told uh, it has got the fields something like type and um, address type and uh, length of the addressability also and uh, it does this uh, evaluation it does this evaluation when it reaches for what when it reaches for the the non terminal part so it goes with the A non-terminal part in the sense when it finishes, 
uh, when it finishes all the reaching of the all the reaching of the variables or all reaching of the identifiers see here all reaching of the identifier so it has to see the yak compiler has to see the um, um, uh, descriptor which descriptor operand descriptor so operand descriptor cannot be only one because as per my example i have two operand descriptor so that's what it is incremented here i plus one so whenever it sees the operand so for whenever it sees the operand it has to describe for all the operands with the uh, 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 with its format what is its format of the operand descriptor type addressability is the operand descriptor type gives the type uh, that means uh, here we have the two attributes that is uh, sub attributes that is type and the length and addressability was described by having the m or r m or r of the operand and uh, m or r uh, m it can be m or it can be r and address of operand it is nothing but it is either a or b multiple now it can be multiple or it can be the same so why it has to return back to the i because it after seeing this after fulfilling whenever operand is saying it has to return back that it has finished it so this is what uh, it follows the code generator uh, this is how the skeleton of the code generator the skeleton of the code generator it has to see for uh, the code uh, it has to see for the code generator uh, that code generator can be the uh, anything it can be either plus or multiplication whenever it sees the plus or multiplication it has to perform uh, the uh, I mean descriptor that descriptor can be the uh, operand descriptor that operand descriptor follows again its own format so in this way it completes the assembly code in this way it completes this assembly code so here uh, i mean uh, the toy code facilitated the coding uh, of the semantic actions here and uh, each uh, non terminal has an attribute you know very well that that each non terminal has an attribute uh, something like the identifier who is the identifier the identifiers are a and b the identifiers are a and b and who is this a and b a and b are nothing but the operands a and b are nothing but the operands so in this way the code generator uses the operand descriptor bars as the attributes of non terminals and symbols also and the semantic actions for this uh, productions which is nothing but the production called as f calls the routine of the field descriptor and which builds a descriptor for id which build id is nothing but identifier and returns its entry to the uh, return its entry to the uh, number number in the sense the operand descriptor and further it is all uh, further it is followed the same loop if it has got many more identifiers if it has got many more identifiers and when the operator plus and star is reduced so the routine calls the the routine uh, calls the um, calls the code generator when the operator plus and star is used the routine calls the code generator that uh, code generator is nothing but it is invoked with an operator and the descriptor it is invoked with the operator and the descriptor now what a descriptor here i am it is invoked with the operator and the see here when the operator plus when the operator plus or star is reduced reduced in the sense reached when the operator like plus or star is reached the routine what it does it calls the code generator it is invoked with a operator and a descriptor of the operands as parameter it is invoked this is invoked and it examines what is the operand and if it is a operand it follows the format if it is a operand it follows the format so here generating uh, now next it follows how does it generate the 
instructions you know very well that when an opera operator is reduced uh, is reduced it generates the instruction it generates the instruction now operator is reduced in the sense either plus or star so if plus is there means it has to exhibit or it has to execute or it has to call add and when star is invoked means it has to call the operator mult it has to call the operator mult so in this way the functions of the code generator is called with the operator and it would also generate the single instruction also as i said because the every compiler wish to have less number of instructions wish to have less number of instructions so a single instruction can be generated to evaluate the operator also as i have shown in the example we can also reduce the number of instructions we can also reduce the number of instructions so if both the operands are in memory an instruction is also generated to move one of them into the register how the partial results are saved that also i have told uh, saving the partial results in the registers if the partial result results are there in the registers and uh, what would be the status or what would be the description of the register is occupied is occupied and this is how the code for a code generator operator 1 and operator 2 for operator 1 and operator 2 is all of you understanding this i have here i have taken from the textbook the code generator for operand 1 and operand 2 which operand 1 a and b as i said this is my operand 1 and operand 2 how is the code generator that part i will tell here how is the code generator for operand 1 and the code generator for operand 1 and 2 if it is operand 1 the addressability code will be the r why because it has to move to the register so if it is a operator if it is a operator so what it has to do it has to generate the code it has to generate means add say for example add it has to generate the code else if it is a operand 2 again it has to see the register if it is a operand plus else if it is a operand plus again it has to generate the code for that else other than this else what could be the case three means else if the register else if it is a register the status is occupied means that time it is called as the partial status of the result and that time it has to generate the instruction something like move m because move m because why because from the register it has to move back to the memory it has to move back to the memory by using the temporary registers by using the temporary register temporary registers here it is made by using the temporary arrays by making use of the arrays so that it can uh, move back to the memory so this part it has to work out so if uh, else if it is not an uh, else if it is not an uh, the i mean if it is freed if it is freed what it has to do what it has to do means the register is free means indicates that Uh, indicates that that the register is free indicates that there are no contents in the register there are no content in the register and else if, uh, else uh, if it is occupied means it has to see for further registers also it has further registers why because there is not only one operand there is multiple operand can be so it has to see for the further operand also and it has to describe like based on type length and r and the length uh, r is nothing but the addressability of the register and it will it has to give the result by saying as occupied saying as occupied is understanding onkar ji madam am i audible सुन तो पा रहे हैं लेकिन आपकी आवाज काफी वक्त से रुक रुक के आ रही थी ओके okay. शायद नहीं नहीं सर सर शायद मेरा इशू होगा क्योंकि यहां पे बारिश का फे काफी बारिश होने की वजह से नेटवर्क में खराब है इसलिए शायद मेरा इशू हो सकता है मुझे पता नहीं चल रहा है कि मेरा इशू 
हाँ हाँ हमारे पास भी वैसे ही है बारिश का ही है प्रॉब्लम ओके समझ में नहीं आ रहा हेलो हाँ क्योंकि आपकी आवाज तो रुक के आ रही है शायद मेरा ही प्रॉब्लम है आप एक काम कीजिए आप कक्षा प्रतिनिधि से पूछ लीजिए एक बार ओके बट दे शुड हैव रिप्लाइड मी एट दैट टाइम ओनली यस सलो आई मीन सोनिया सोनिया एम आई ऑडिबल पूजा पूजा कटे रोल नंबर वन प्रेजेंट एम आई ऑडिबल शिवानी मैम ओके हैव यू अंडरस्टूड यस मैम I was telling about how the code is, uh, how the uh, code will be generated using the uh, using the operand descriptor and using the register descriptor. And we have seen that code generator. How does it goes and reach to the multiple operands using the toy code generator? understood shivani yogesh are you understanding hello yogesh madhura roll number 2 present ma'am have you understood yes ma'am again two is also shivani only two two shivani is are there s yes, shivani who is roll number 2 yes ma'am who is roll number 1 yes ma'am both are telling us what's your name one is shivani rajesh the other one is shivani sharad have you understood shivani rajesh and shivani sharad yes ma'am okay रोल नंबर थ्री फोर Present. Present, ma'am. Have you understood? Yes, ma'am. Six. Present. Seven. Eight. Present, ma'am. Present. Nine. Present, ma'am. Ten. Eleven. Present, ma'am. Okay, twelve, thirteen. Present, ma'am. Present, ma'am. Present, ma'am. Thirteen. Ma'am, twelve is present. Thirteen, present. Sixteen, nineteen. Fourteen, present, ma'am. Sixteen, present, ma'am. Fourteen okay. present. Twenty. Okay. Seventeen present. Okay. Ma'am, eighteen present. Twenty-one. Eighteen present. Nineteen present. Twenty present. Okay, okay. Twenty-one present. Present. Twenty-two. Pooja, have you understood? Present, ma'am. 
Puja, Puja Kate. Puja, have you understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Twenty two. Twenty two present. Twenty three. Present. Twenty four. Present. Twenty five. Present. Twenty six. Present, ma'am. Twenty six. Twenty seven. Twenty seven present, ma'am. Twenty eight. Twenty eight present, ma'am. Twenty nine present. Yes, ma'am. Present. Thirty. Present, ma'am. Thirty one. Thirty one. Thirty two. Present, ma'am. Thirty thirty three present, ma'am. Okay, thirty four. Thirty five. Thirty five present, ma'am. Thirty six. Thirty seven. Ma'am. Thirty eight present, ma'am. Thirty nine. Thirty nine present, ma'am. Forty present, ma'am. Forty one. Forty two. Present. Forty three. Forty three present. Okay, forty five. Present, ma'am. Forty four. Present, ma'am. Forty five present. Ha. Ha. Forty six. Forty seven. Yes, ma'am. Forty eight. Forty nine. Present, ma'am. Present, ma'am. Fifty one. Present, ma'am. Present, ma'am. Fifty present. Okay. Fifty two. Okay. Fifty two. Fifty. Fifty five. Fifty four present. Fifty six. Fifty five present. Fifty six present. Huh. Huh. Fifty seven. Fifty seven present, ma'am. Fifty eight. Present, ma'am. Fifty nine. Present. Sixty. Sixty one. Present, ma'am. Sixty one. Sixty two. Sixty three. Madam, two hundred left. Zala. Net to problem. Okay. Means. Net to problem. Sixty three. Sixty four. Sixty four present, ma'am. Ha. Sixty five. Sixty six. Present. Sixty seven. Present. Sixty eight. Present. Sixty nine. Present. Seventy. Present. Okay. Thank you all. But if I am uh, low, will you uh, please uh, do uh, acknowledge me that my voice is not clear? I would arrange some other. Meanwhile, you should tell. Please uh, don't tell at the end. Okay. But there are so many network issues, even with me also, because of heavy rainfall. Thank you all. Hello, ma'am. Number forty-six present. Okay, I will repeat once. All the absentees: three, eight, twelve, thirteen, thirty-one, thirty-four. Thirteen present, ma'am. Okay. Thirty-one, thirty-one. Twelve, ma'am. Huh? Twelve, ma'am. Twelve. Twelve, I didn't. Huh? Okay. Three, eight, thirty-one, thirty-four, thirty-six, forty-one, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-seven. Are absent. Ma'am, forty-nine. Forty-nine present. Ma'am, roll number eight. 
49 is present 46 ma'am 8 yes ma'am 46 ti i told na okay thank you all